Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about assembling your sub assemblies <laughs> basically how when you're using sub assemblies do you actually then put the model together when it's fully painted and make everything work out okay uh, so we're going to talk that through uh, so you can see here i have the i'm working on the king of ecstasy model so it's this dude right here uh, from creature caster and as you can see got a little cloak got a little belt buckle piece We've got a shield hand, we've got a sword hand, we've got a head. This dude has a lot of different sub-assembly pieces. And that's just the, sort of the nature of how I had to, to take him apart. So, uh, we're going to talk through the sub-assemblies on this guy today and how we put it back together. And we're actually going to start with this right here, which is his missing arm. So he has a shield arm, and that shield arm sits like this. And obviously if I were to just glue it in, you would be able to see a little gap there. So we're gonna talk about how we get that on there, and then how we repair it. So you can see how it's separate. We're gonna start. This is a resin model, so we have to use super glue, unfortunately, but that's just the nature of the beast. So. We're going to start with a little little zap a gap uh, medium CA glue. Just going to scoot him for a second. Not going to put a ton on there, just a little bit of glue. All right, I'm going to let that set for just a second and settle out. Okay, and we're going to bring him over here. And line it up. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just drop a little drip of accelerant on there. Push it nice and tight. And you can see it's all assembled. And there you can see where I have that really ugly seam line right there, right where the arm is put back together. Now, I think this is one of those things that like stops people from doing sub-assemblies, is they're afraid of what do you do from this point. Um, you can see I didn't do anything different or special in the gluing, but I'm going to show you a couple easy tricks that we can use to repair this. So I wanted to start just by gluing it on and show you that I was gluing it on because it would be weird to just have me start with a glued on arm and then try to show you the line. It'll be much more visible now. But I am going to let the glue dry, and that's step number one. Before you go futzing with anything, you have to let it sit for a minute. This has to dry completely. So, give me just a moment. Uh, we're going to let that dry, and I'll be right back. Alright, so our glue is all dry, and now we come to the next step. I went ahead and assembled the, the rest of the pieces on him as well, except for his backpack, just to have him kind of all together there so we can see what that looks like, because if I'm gluing, I might as well just glue it all. So we're going to start with a little gloss varnish. And that's actually going to be our key here. So take a little bit of that gloss varnish down there. If the seam is thin enough, I use varnish. Like this is a pretty thin seam. If you end up with a thicker seam, then what you want to do is take either some plastic putty or some perfect putty, something like this, mix it one to one with water and run it in there. I think one of the things that scares people is they're like, oh, I spent so much time painting, I can't paint it more. Well, it's like, it's not that big a deal, is basically my answer. You can pretty much paint over it and have it disappear, and people won't, and you won't generally be able to tell. So, we just work a nice layer of that gloss varnish right around there. Make sure it's down in the crack everywhere. Let's see, I'll have to turn them around here. To get the back side. It's a little bigger gap on the back, so we'll see if we can't really lay it in there. Okay, so now we let that dry. And what's going to happen is when that's dry, it's still going to show the gap because it will dry clear and glossy. 
but that's all right because I will show you how we're just going to quickly and simply paint it over when we come back. So back in a moment. All right, so our arm joint is all dry. It's still shiny, but it's all dry. And I move my palette in a frame here. It's all a mess right now. Sorry about that, but this is just the nature of the thing at the end of a project. Obviously, I've, this this whole palette is uh, is painting this guy. But I mixed basically like a mid tone of my skin tone. So my skin tone here is a fairly complicated recipe. It's uh, some ghostly moss or something from Reaper. What is this called? Oh, sorry, maggot white um, from Reaper. Some flesh five from War Colors. Some black leather, and then some some of the new Scale seventy five heavy body acrylic uh, violet gray, which I really like. Um, it's a good color. Anyway, so I've mixed a nice tone of that, and now what we're going to do is get him in frame. And you can see where that joint is. And what I'm going to do is just run a nice opaque layer of paint right over that joint. I'm not going to worry too much about the color right now and whether or not it matches. I'm just going to get it nice and opaque. Might take a couple layers as I got to move this ridiculous thing around. Okay, so you can see how that crack disappears there as we make the uh, as we make the as we cover it over with paint. Now, if when we're going over it, like we are here on the back, some of that crack is still there because it shrank. That's fine. We can always go back to the gloss varnish to a second layer after this dries, and that is a key. You want to make sure you let the paint dry. It can sometimes take a time or two to figure it out. But you just basically get that nice opaque layer in there that you're working from. And you can see, let's grab a little more of that lighter color. Oh my gosh, this guy's annoying to use on camera. Okay. Now when we put that over there, that crack mostly disappears. Again, if it's still there, no problem. We let that dry, and then we do a little second layer. Okay. And there we go, all gone, just that easy. And then it's just a quick matter of, of, you know, refinishing this tiny area right here. And the trick with it is, a lot of people get concerned because they're like, well, I spent so long blending this whole thing. And they sort of imagine in their minds that they're redoing the entire project. And I think that's what scares people. That's not what you're doing. When you're doing something like this, it's just the tiniest little area you're retouching. And your eye is generally going to be confused enough with sort of the, the visual confusion of what's going on elsewhere in the model to not even notice if there's a tiny little blend out of place here or something like that. So you can see how I just work it in there real quick. And just like that. We're smooth, and boom. Now I'll probably re-varnish that backside because it's kind of ugly, it's kind of uggo, it's got a big crack in it. Um, but that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple thing. The key is the varnish really makes it easy because it dries fast. If you've got a bigger crack, you might need to get out the putty, but even then, when you water it down, when you water down the plastic putty or whatever, you can then just wipe it away with your brush next to it so you retain your original paint. Um, 
And that's all there is to it. It's a really simple method. This is how I, you know, re-get my models together once I'm uh, once I'm assemb once I'm putting back together these sub assemblies. And I I've honestly never had a problem with it. So it's what I would recommend. It's a very very simple method, and uh, I hopefully it will help you out. So there you go. I'm just gonna do some final work on him, and the king will be ready to go. Uh, but uh, if you liked this, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, if you uh, would like to see more, please subscribe. Uh, we have new hobby cheating here every Saturday. Uh, if you have suggestions for future videos, go ahead and throw those down in the comments. Always love suggestions for future videos. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to drop those down. But as always, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.